An interesting historical moment that illustrates the attitude towards name during history is the disappearance of the patronymic in European culture. Unlike the surname, which originally reflected the coat of arms of a noble family, and which appeared only on the threshold of the new time among aristocrats, the patronymic has been the property of all European people from immemorial time regardless of the social status of the bearer of the patronymic in question. And the patronymic opposing isolation binds the individual to his parent and provides at the same time individuality by the gender ending. The absence of a surname for most of the citizens in Scandinavia in the 19th century led to a notable situation in the fact that the masculine patronymics in the Nordics, except Iceland, we should say, became fixated and turned into an unchangeable surname with a lost meaning, regardless of whether the possessor of the name might be a man or a woman. In Swedish language, this phenomenon is denoted by the suffix san, while in Danish and Norwegian by the suffix sen. In the rest of the European environment, the patronymic mainly got lost without a trace. The current governments, based on East Slavic languages, that is Russian, Belarusian and Ukrainian, form in this context a modern exception in European history. In Protestant countries, in addition, it has recently become increasingly popular not only freely to show the surname that seems to be most attractive, of the parental surnames, but even to freely invent a new surname for oneself. So all in all, the modern triumph of the lingual atomism that we analyzed in our previous sessions is clearly reflected in the attitude towards patronymics and surnames in European history, except in the most part of former Soviet territories, where the patronymics, in spite of the communism, are still alive.